It said you're the same as God, but I don't feel it. The, the way that I think about it is there's two different levels of existence. Now, there's a lot of levels, but we'll break them just into two. One is the core truth. You can call it the highest truth, the deepest truth, the most fundamental truth. And the other is the temporary truth. So one way to think of the distinction is you have an ocean, you have a wave. Okay. Now, when you look at the wave, the core truth of that wave is ocean. It was ocean long before it became a wave. When the wave is over, it'll still be ocean. Even in the wave, it still is ocean. If you take a cup of a wave, if you were surfing, and while you surf, you bend down and you scoop up a cup of the wave, and you bring it back to a science laboratory, and they look at it under a microscope, they're not going to say wave, they're going to say ocean. Under a microscope, there's no way of knowing you grabbed that cup from a wave versus you grabbed that cup from somewhere else in the ocean. But at that moment, there was a wave. And this is where when we talk about illusion, it's an interesting, it's an interesting dilemma because a lot of us, if, you, if you're not really deep in the philosophy, and you're not under the guidance of, a, of an enlightened guru, it can get very confusing. You start to think, well, everything is an illusion. Well, it's not in the way that I haven't made this up. There's very specific laws of nature. I didn't create them. If I made this up, people I love who have passed away, I would rise them again. I would revoke the law of gravity so that I could, you know, fly out of a traffic jam. There'd be all kinds of things I would do. If I were, if this were all really just a figment of my imagination, I'd have a lot of fun. with the power, but it's not on that level. In the same way that if you're surfing a wave and that wave is high and it crashes suddenly, you're going to find yourself face down in the ocean with your surfboard on top of your head. It wasn't a figment of your imagination. It was really there. You could end up with a real big red bump on the back of your head. If you had simply projected the wave, you'd, you know, rewind it or make it smaller or whatever. So when we say illusion, it's not as simple as the way that most of us think of illusions, as is if I just realize it's not there, I can make it change. But it's not the highest truth. And so those are the two different ways of thinking about it. Another way of thinking about it, and then we're going to bring it to God in a moment, is, again, the ocean analogy, but think of a drop of water, okay? So you have the sun that shines on the ocean, causes evaporation. So some of the water evaporates out of the ocean. It goes into the clouds. The wind comes, it carries the cloud. Cloud drops its water. A drop falls in the sewer. Okay. It's covered in, you know, sewage. <laughs> well, if you pick that up, what is that? 
Is it sewage? Well, on one level, yeah, it is sewage. But on the core level, it's ocean. That's where it's going back to. All the water on earth is headed back to the ocean. Every river, every stream, it's all heading right back to the ocean. Above land, below land. It's ocean. And you couldn't drown in it. So in the same way, we are God in the way that the drop is ocean. In the way that a wave is ocean. At the core, that is who we are. That doesn't mean a drop has the power to drown someone. It doesn't mean a wave has the power to sustain the life that the ocean has. You look at what exists in the ocean. Well, that doesn't exist in one wave. The possibility for it does. The wave has everything it needs. It just doesn't have quite enough. The drop has what it needs just doesn't have quite enough. For us, at the core, we're divine. But just like the drop is covered with whatever it's covered with, whether it's sewage in that case, whether it's anything else anywhere, that that border around the drop is what keeps it separate. Now, what happens When that drop actually finally gets back to the ocean, what happens? Merges with the ocean, right? No more more drop. Like this. Suddenly, there's no more drop. It's just ocean. The wave crashes. Where'd the wave go? It's ocean. So that which prevents us from the full experience of the divine is this identification with the separate being. As long as I'm identified as the separate being, I cannot be identified as ocean. If I identify as sewage, I cannot be ocean. If I'm a wave, I'm not ocean. I mean, I may understand theoretically that at the core I am, but my present moment experience is, oh my God, I smell really bad, or oh my God, I'm going to, you know, crash this guy or give him a good surfing ride. If I'm identified as form, I'm not identified as content. And so the reason you don't feel like God is you feel like you. The lowercase y, you, your name, your age, your career, your relationship. You're looking around, you're saying, I'm sewage. See, there's, you know, pee here and poo here and dirt there. And look, it is. I show it to you. And it's not an illusion. It's there. But you have a choice of do I identify as that or do I identify as the content? And that's that's the path. Now, of course, that doesn't mean, even when you identify as it, it doesn't mean that you have the power of God any more than the drop has the power to drown someone or to sustain life. But it's the identification. When the drop knows its ocean, knows where it has to go. And it's not very worried about what's on it because it knows I'm getting back to the ocean, I'm getting back to the ocean. And so in the same way in your life, yeah, you have the body, you have the identity. But if you can realize that the deeper identity is the divine, not just theoretically, but actually try to experience that, It'll give you a taste of the truth of who you are. You're not going to start feeling like the omniscient, omnipotent God, which is good. If you do, that's when you go see someone. 
but you start to experience yourself as part of that. And as I said before, there's no place that inner and outer any longer separate. So you're part of that. And in some ways you are the whole of it. But it doesn't carry with it the I am God experience because Lastly, the I am God, if it's separating me from you, well, then it's not really I'm God. The minute, the minute that I touch the fullness, not just the dropness, but the oceanness, then it's not I am God, it's just, oh God. See, there is no longer an I. As long as there's an I, it's drop, it's wave. The minute it becomes actually ocean, it's no longer I. It's just ocean. But along the way, just keep bringing yourself back to as much of that as you can experience in you. Don't expect that you're going to experience the, you know, omnipotent, omniscient, infinite. But try to experience a reflection of that inside. And that'll connect you to it outside. And slowly, 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 that border will break.